Hey guys, Colst here. So before anyone gets confused why the guy on the video screen isn't talking, this is me doing a voiceover. So I've had some requests for, to make some drafting videos, but I play music on my stream so I can't just upload the videos straight up to YouTube because of copyright issues, so I figured I'd do it this way. Also this way I can talk about my thought process and also add some initial analysis that I don't necessarily put on the stream. This video is going to be featuring my first 12-0 of the Saviors of Oldham expansion, which as you can see is a rogue draft. It was actually the run that clinched my 8.27 on NA for this season. So of course I will have the Twitch highlight available in the description, so if you want to watch it there, the original version, or you want to watch the rest of the run, you can do that as well. And of course follow me on Twitch as well if you're interested in seeing these in real time. With that, let's just get right into the first pick. So the first pick here, I think it's between Hallucinate and Assassinate. Assassinate is, uh, I would say, the more consistent card, but you tend to get a lot of Assassinate effects in Rogue, so you can be pretty choosy about which of these cards you actually take. So here, I think it's pretty close power level-wise. I take the Hallucinate just because it's more fun. Alright, so the next pick here is between a Vile Fiend and a Volatile Elemental. I think these are both pretty mediocre cards. Vile Fiend, again, might be more consistent, but Elemental also has more upside. I take the Elemental, but I wouldn't fault you for taking the Vile Fiend either. Alright, so here we have Feral Cat against Walk the Plank and Bizarre Mugger. And these are all very good cards, but I think Feral Cat is actually the best card, which is not super obvious, but when you play with it, you really start to just feel how powerful this card is. This is one card that you can compare to an older card, which was Swashburglar, which was a 1 mana 1 1 that gave you a random card from your opponent's class, which was also a very high bucketed card. Ferrocat was actually originally bucketed much lower, I think in the fourth bucket, now they moved it up to where it probably appropriately should be. But um, Ferrocat is essentially a much better Swashburglar. Ferrocat, it has an extra stat line, 1-2 instead of 1-1, one, one. and also it gives you a Reborn minion instead of a Carpium Points class, and the thing about Reborn minions is that they're pretty much all really, really good. Some of the bad ones, like maybe you just don't want the 1-1, one, one. you don't want Mermy, maybe you don't want Generous Mummy, but other than that, like they're all mostly premium premium cards so just the value of having the one mana one two which is just is essentially free you can use that body to essentially get a free ping or push extra face damage and then it also gives you a really good card and just makes feral cat absolutely insane i think feral cat is actually one of the best cards that rogue currently has access to only like I don't know, Rap Cola might be in the same league, and maybe Sap you can compare it to as well, but Feral Cat is really on a level that's hard to touch by other cards. That's why I'm going to pick it here. Okay, so here I think it's pretty straightforward. Sightless Ranger, just the best card here. Great reactive mid-game minion. Not much to talk about there. So we have another super premium pick. Rap Golem against Bizarre Mugger and Walk the Plank. And for me personally, I just absolutely love Rap Golem. And yeah, it's just so dominating. When you put your head on board and you put a Rap Golem on board, you basically just win the game. So I hardly pass Rap Golem, just in general. Now here I think it's just a really easy Toothy Chest. It's just the only option here. Toothy Chest, at least if you're a head on board, you can often get full value out of it. Three mana, four, four. Oh, it's pretty good. Okay, so here we have three good cards. Um, I'm going to talk about each of them. So Volcanosaur is a, it's a good 7 drop. I don't really like it in this meta just because um, there's just better late game drops, you know. They just do its job better, I think, typically. So I don't tend to value it too highly. Tolvir also is a very good 2 drop. It has upside, especially if you happen to get it with like a Neverfest Ritualist. It's just really unfair. And I'm going to take the Betrayal. Betrayal can be very good against poisonous means and things, and although it can be a little hard to use aggressively, you can usually at least get it onto a ton. It'll maybe be at least like 2 mana deal 3 damage, which is often good enough, but to be honest, if I had this pick back, I probably would take the Tolvir now. Here we have two really good value generating cards and the Envenom weapon. Here I think this is where we can take the Envenom weapon. I was talking about how you can be choosy about what kind of assassinate-like effects. I think this is the one you take. The first one is just amazing. The main downside of Venom Weapon is if you're a defensive deck especially, you might not have the life total to really get full value out of Venom Weapon, killing two big things. In an aggressive deck, you just typically won't have that problem. And here I take the Tolvir or the Mastodon. I just don't want late game unless it's premium. And talking about premium late game, Warbear, that's what we're looking for. So we take that. And here I think this is just a really easy Tar Creeper. I think I'm actually talking to someone in my chat about Generous Mummy still because of the Feral Cats. But um... 
Yeah, you just you won't really see me skip Tar Creepers almost ever. Berserker is also a really good two drop, but Tar Creeper is honestly just a centerpiece to the strategy. Like the whole idea of an aggro deck right now is you play some early minions and then you put them behind a Tar Creeper where your opponent can't get to them, and they just get a bunch of free damage into your opponent's face unless they have their own Tar Creeper. Then you're still protecting your minions from their board as well. It's honestly just crazy how good of a card Tar Creeper is in this kind of a meta. So yeah, we're gonna take that. And here I'm looking at the Firefly. I like Firefly, but Ritualist is just such a good card. I think you gotta take it here. I do like Firefly, but to be honest, Firefly is almost a bad Feral Cut, which we now see here. They actually fill a rather similar role. Filling in your Mana Crystals just when you have nothing better to do. Get something free out there, essentially. But Feral Cut gets you a Reborn Minion, which is a lot better than a 1 Mana 1 2. So, Feral Cut's definitely the better card. There's another time where I think I hesitate just because I would like a Plank or an Eviscerate, but it's just Feral Cat is too good to pass. I think what's really good about Feral Cat is just the fact that it's never bad. One problem you can actually have with Rogue decks when you high roll them is that sometimes the deck just doesn't work. Because yeah, if you have like all these premiums like Sap and Walk the Plank, sometimes they actually become dead. But Feral Cat just doesn't have that problem, so it's a really safe pick all the time, so... That's just part of what makes Feral Cat such an amazing card right now, I think. And here I think is just another auto pick here with the Sightless Ranger. Just the best card here. So here we have Sapper against a Toad and a Firefly. I want to talk about Sapper because um, Sapper is a very interesting card. Honestly, I haven't liked it all that much, but it's definitely a good card. It's just people will find any possible way they can to punish you for playing it. But the thing about it is that even if they do punish you, like they might like play a Battle Cry minion like a Scarab or something to get the extra battle cry value but even if they do something like that as long as you're playing aggressively they may gain value but you're still gaining tempo so you can still often use that benefit to kill them so it's often not a big deal but there are certain times that sapper can be very awkward and to the point where you just don't want to play it people love doing anything with it though like people just like kill it with a pit croc so they get the pit croc back but again they're trading eight mana for your four so as long as you're able to use that advantage, it's good. But I still don't really like the card all that much. So I'm kind of happy that I can take the Firefly here. Because Firefly, I think, is still just a better card. And Toad is also an above average 2 drop, but I think Firefly is still better than that. Alright, so here I'm looking mainly at the Basilisk and the Tomb Pillager. I think we just don't want the Hallucinate. I think we need to drop more right now. We're halfway through the deck. We only have what kind of like 2 3 drops and 1 4 drop. So we're definitely behind on that. And here, honestly, like, I just don't really like Basilisk right now. And the problem with Basilisk is it's just bad in all of the hard matchups. Like, for me, the matchups I'm really thinking about are Mage, Hunter, and Rogue. And all those classes, just they ping very, very well. And the other problem with Basilisk is just in an aggressive deck, it doesn't actually push face damage. Maybe you have a Basilisk on the board and you slow your opponent down, but you're also slowing yourself down. So you kind of lose critical turns to actually push damage. Tomb Pillager is very different. Obviously having a good body of 4 mana, 5, 4. A coin just gives you more options in the future. So it's a fun card. I just kind of want to play with it, so I pick it here. And here I think it's a pretty straightforward Mugger. Mugger is just a better card than Hallucinate, I think. Just the rush body is worth um, the downside of not being able to choose your card compared to Hallucinate. And we already have an Envenom weapon. Envenom weapon is a card. You don't want to have two in your hand. It just becomes clunky and has diminishing returns very fast. You start taking too much damage too, even if you actually manage to use all four swings of it. So I think it's just a easy mugger we want the value we want everything that mugger does right now so it's a perfect pick for our deck and here i think it's a pretty straightforward wasp i do like sludge as well but honestly even against weapon classes you often have to just tempo out sludge you don't even get the battle cry value and wasp is just a better card than a five mana five five we also need the three drop but yeah wasp is just a great consistent card so we take it here here i uh, don't really have a choice i think just take the raise for hunter best card and um, here I like both the Lasher and the Scorcher. I think I favor the Scorcher here just because we don't have like a single AoE effect, like no Fana Knives, no Scorchers, anything like that. And it's going to be hard to come by in Rogue if you don't get these exact cards, so I take it here. But Lasher is also a great card. It would fit our deck very well as, as well. It's just something to play on turn two that will give you another ping. And pings are just so supremely valuable right now. Oh uh, yeah, we go for the Scorcher here. Now, we're going to Infiltrator, just the only card there. 
Jungle Panther, really kind of just the only card there. Wolf Rider isn't terrible, but I think Panther just does everything it would normally do better. Here, just another time, kind of like before, War Bear, just an amazing premium drop in pretty much every type of deck. So we're going to take it here. And here, just kind of, again, like Mugger, same reason as before. It's just amazing for our deck. This is uh, not so good of a pick, but Stormwind Knight is kind of the only card I really want. Egg, we can't really activate, and Warbringer, just not what we're looking for. So we take the Knight. Here, um, the Calamos, I think we take here, because we actually do have a fair number of elementals, so it's an extra value drop. A snapshot would not be bad either, just having an extra 4 drop, but I don't think it's necessary, so we take the Calamos, kind of for fun. Here, um, I think this is an interesting pick. These are all actually very amazing cards for our deck. Mugger, kind of for the same reason as before, but we already have two, so we don't necessarily need another one, I think. Fungal Mancer would also be very good in our deck. So we have like the Fireflies, the Feral Cats, and all these other minions that we have buffed very well, but I think it's a little riskier in this track. We actually don't have a great like three and four drops to set up Fungal Mancer, so I'm thinking it'll be a little hard to get off, and just having another plank would be really useful. Just to have an extra kind of out against certain things. So we take the plank here. I think it's the safe option. This pick, just a real easy raider. It's great in rogue. We need a two. We don't need a five. Just what more reasons could you want? So I think this is an interesting pick between Gastropod and Ankle Biter. Gastropod actually isn't performing well in a lot of classes. Ankle Biter is performing very well because, especially non ping classes, but even ping classes can often use all the pings they can get right now. And Ankle Biter also had some nice healing. But in this deck, I do think the Gastropod makes more sense. We can really use the 2-drop, and it's a good card, so we take it here. And for the last pick here, I think Backstab just covers our weaknesses the most. Um, we already have, like, a Plank and an Inven Weapon, so I don't think we need the Assassinate. We already have a lot of value generation, so I just don't think we need the Clever Disguise. And I think the most liked way we lose with this deck would be if we just get out-tempoed, and Backstab is one of the best cards in the game at making sure that doesn't happen. So, yeah, I think it's a Backstab here. Yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like the video. If you're interested in seeing how the run went, of course, then the Twitch highlight is linked below. Make sure to comment as well if you like this video or any feedback, or if you want to keep seeing these kind of videos in the future. And follow my Twitch as well if you want to see these videos in real time. Oh yeah, thanks again everyone. I'll see you around.